Hey, I just found a ridiculous hot deal, insane ROI. We're all going to be rich. Who wants to get in on the deal? I am. Guys, today we're talking about crowdfunding. It's how people come together, pool money to make deals happen. Is it good? Is it bad? You're about to find out. One, 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 one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. I'm turning dreams into reality. Yeah. It's one, all, one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Have you heard of Kickstarter? Right? It's this marketplace where people come and pitch ideas and say, hey, if you guys can all like throw some money in, then I'll be able to get this idea off the ground and if it becomes something, you'll be a part of it. Well, you know, there's some goofballs out there. Check out what this kid did. He said, potato salad. I'm making potato salad. Come fund me. I need $10. And you know what happened? 6,900 people came together and put up $55,000 for this joke to crowdfund potato salad. This potato salad is amazing. Nice. It's kind of stupid, but it's also kind of cool. And here's my question. Can you actually do that in the game of real estate? Could we crowdfund a deal? Well, today we're actually talking about not whether you can, we're talking about how to crowdfund real estate. I'm going to help you understand what it is and I'm gonna help you understand where it works brilliantly and also where you need to beware. By the way, at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you three additional methods that I use for funding deals. That means that anyone with any amount of credit or money or none can actually be in the game and invest in real estate too. Here's the first question. What technically is crowdfunding? Let me give you an example. Let's just say with your imagination that this is a house and I need $50,000 to buy this house. And you know who has $50,000? My business partner. This is actually my wife, my kids. We went on that cruise last year. We're definitely not doing that now because of the stupid pandemic. 50 grand, this is one way that I could actually buy this house. But let me show you what crowdfunding is. You see all these people? There's a crowd of people. And if I say, hey people, Look at this cool house that I want to buy and I'll share in all the profits together but I need you to put up some money like can you put up uh, like uh, $500 and can you put up $100 and can you put up like $1,000 and can you put up a and all of a sudden all these people come together and everyone pinches in like just a little bit of money and guess what? I've got the same stack and now I have two ways of buying the house. In this situation, I need to know someone with a pile of cash to make the deal happen. With crowdfunding, all of us just going a little bit and now we're making deals happen. Is crowdfunding in real estate like even a thing or is it like a super tiny niche? Well, I don't know, is 13.9 trillion dollars small to you? This market has become something since 2016. Let me tell you why. Back in 2012 with the Jobs Act, they basically said, hey, People can crowdfund as long as they are worth a million dollars or more. So basically, this went to the people that have the money. However, that changed in 2016 with the Title III Amendment, which basically said now non-wealthy people can come together and pool their money and actually start doing deals. Like someone might say, I got one coin, and another one says, I got five coins. Basically, it's a way for the wealthy and the non-wealthy to come together. And guess what? They're doing a lot of real estate with this method. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you whether or not I really like crowdfunding or not, but you can't ignore these advantages. From Investopedia, one of the biggest advantages of investing in crowdfunding for real estate is that investors can commit far lower amounts of capital towards any single property, sometimes as low as $500 or $1,000. Like, think about that for just a second. That's a really tiny amount of money when normally the number one reason why people don't get in the game is because of how much money it takes. So I mentioned Kickstarter for like funding businesses and project ideas, but there are companies out there that are dedicated to literally just doing this in the game of real estate. Companies like Fundrise, you basically pull money together and guess what they do? They do big commercial ventures, although I'm not sure that's been super hot since the pandemic. But check it out, you can't deny these three benefits. You get access to real estate markets with small amounts of money. You can choose which real estate projects you want to put your money in, so you get to be choosy. And finally, you have a lower investment sizes in any single project. It means that you can diversify. It means that you literally could put money in maybe like 100 deals instead of just one. Pause. 
Would you be willing to share my YouTube videos if it meant that you could earn a chance to win $100,000 of free real estate mentoring with me for life? Click the link below, share a bunch of my videos, and this week you'll find out if I pick you. However, there are some huge disadvantages with crowdfunding, and here's the biggest one. The risk of investment default is a lot higher for crowdfunding compared to peer-to-peer -peer and direct real estate investment funding. Let me tell you why. Normally, if I make a deal and something goes wrong, I'm defaulting on the bank. But in a crowdfunded deal, do you know who normally the bank is? It's the investor, it's the people, it's you. So if you get in on a deal and something goes bad, guess what? Default means we're not having a problem with the bank, it means that you wind up like with nothing. So you get nothing. Investopedia also notes the second biggest disadvantage when it comes to crowdfunding, it's a lack of liquidity. Because unlike stocks, it's not like if you need to get out of the deal, you can just sell everything off. Check this out. Liquidity refers to the ease with which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. In other words, if you're in this really honking big deal with like a thousand other people and you're like, you know what? I just I need some money, or I want out of the deal, or maybe something happened in my life. Hey, thousand other investors, let's go ahead and change the tune of the song. Dude, like you have no power, you've lost control, and with that, you've lost liquidity. The CEO of Realty Mogul actually came out and said, hey, if you are going to crowdfund, make sure you work with one that is well capitalized. But this is what she said scares her. What scares me is the number of crowdfunding companies out there that are headed up by two students who just graduated from college and who aren't capitalized themselves. In other words, anyone can come together and say, hey, guess what? We're going to make a deal happen. Do they actually have a track record, however? A lot of times they don't. Well, there are some pros, there are some cons, and like I promised, I want to share with you the additional ways that I love actually funding deals. It's not crowdfunding. The biggest pro is that you get to invest less. The disadvantage is that you're gonna make less and potentially have significantly higher risk, so you need to do your due diligence. And I really think track record is what's key on that. But you know what? Crowdfunding is not the only way to get in the game. I've got three things that I prefer like a thousand to one more than crowdfunding. Check it out. If I had met you 12 years ago, I would have said, hop on the bandwagon, let me show you how to buy the juiciest real estate. Right now, it's happening again. We've hit that point in the market cycle where just this last year alone, real estate has appreciated nationwide 11%, a couple more percent to go by the end of the year. Next year is slated to be another great record year. You should be asking yourself, how can I get out in the game and do deals? Now, no matter how young or old you are or how much you think you do or don't know, I want you to know that Uncle Chris is here to, go, 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 go. to take you by the hand and walk you through it. Let me show you the three ways that I actually like to fund my deals. Here they are. The first one is, if you have some money saved up, right, you could just do a 20% down conventional financing. That's this. My wife's my partner. Here's $50,000. She said, Chris, let's go out and actually buy a deal. And you know what? We've got the cash. Maybe it came from 401k. Maybe it came from an IRA. Maybe my house has gone up in value and I pulled out a loan, a home equity line of credit, or I did a refinance. There's a lot of ways today to get capital because there's, the market is flush with it. So that's the obvious answer. Here are the two that I'm excited to share with you. The first one is called OPM and OPC. It stands for other people's money and other people's credit. Number one reason why people don't get in the game of real estate is they're like, well, I guess if I don't have the money, I guess I can't do the deal. And it's because we're trained to have this lone wolf mentality like, it's all me, I have to do it all by myself. And you know what? I wouldn't have retired at the age of 26. I wouldn't have had my six-figure residual income coming in whether I worked or not if I tried to do everything alone. My story, you may know. I actually had my father-in-law become my first partner, and guess what? He had money, other people's money. He also had credit, other people's credit. And he said, Chris, you're finding these amazing deals. Like, you're gonna put in the sweat equity, you're gonna do the work. Let's like bring our resources together and make deals happen. So I want you to learn how to think outside the box, that there are things that you need to make a deal happen. Someone needs money, someone needs credit, and someone's gotta find the deal. Just know that you're not on the hook for doing all three of those. My third favorite way to make a deal happen, which is really unique to something that I created from nothing that you could take advantage of. I call it OPD and OPT. It stands for other people's deals and it stands for other people's track record. 
Did you know that I've done 4,500 single family homes that average an annual ROI of 25%? Like if a bank is paying you 1%, I'm doing 25 times better than that. If the stock market is doing 7%, then I'm doing three to four times better than that. Well, I have a track record and check it out. My team is scouring the market every day for the very best deals and I have more deals than I can possibly buy. So one of the things that I do is I will allow other people to actually partner with me and bring money to the table, like option number one, but I invented something really cool. I call it my Maverick program. I basically say, hey, if, if you know someone with money and credit, they may not want to trust you because you have no track record, but guess what? I've got the track record. So if you send them my way and they partner with me, then all the money we make, we basically split it equally, 50-50. And that's one of the most novel, creative, innovative things I've ever seen actually happen in real estate. In fact, if you wanna learn more about how you could become my equal partner on any deal we do together, without you bringing money to the table, click the link below, get the details, talk to a member of my team, read up on it, because literally, by the end of this day, you and I could be business partners and for life, cash in on a lot of real estate, helping a lot of people. Now, I get what you might be thinking, Chris, how is that not crowdfunding? I mean, other people's credit, other people's money, other people's track record. Notice in this video that we're not really talking about really good deals. Like you can find those all over my website. I'm talking about people because my experience in real estate has been bring people together and together we really will accomplish a lot more than we will on our own. Crowdfunding though is basically saying we, we're gonna bring a lot of people together. And what I'm really talking about is let's pull two strategic people together. It's just different ways of doing real estate. Right now though, the bigger concern on your mind should be, how do I get in and how do I start doing these deals? Because do you know what just happened in the real estate market this year? We are seeing a double digit increase on appreciation. It's looking to be very much the same next year. And I'm actually predicting that we have five more good years of this. And if you wanna know why, you should check out this video and I'll show you how to cash in on it. I'm, I'm serious, I got this deal. Do you guys wanna get in on it? Like, it's hot. I've already bought through this week. You bought through this week? Dude, you're a superstar. Do you want another one? Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.